stand for the presentation of the colors by the EMS Honor Guard and remain standing uh, through the invocation. A Brooklyn Park Church received some unwelcome visitors this past weekend. Volunteers really do have their work cut out for them. They'll be inspecting 23,000 residential lots and city boulevards. The problem began when the railroad decided to increase the train's speed. In the process, they had to raise a portion of the track over here. Fire crews got a call around 4 Friday morning from a passerby alerting them to a deck fire. This time with a lob for Winnicky trying to go up and get it. Touchdown! Well, once again, welcome everybody. <laughs> I'd like to start by introducing our uh, guests at the uh, head table. From the uh, Minnesota State Fires Marshal Office, we have Chief Deputies Bob Don. From the uh, Emergency Medical Services Regulatory Board, we have Executive Director Pam Bilodeau. Pam? And to my left here, uh, from the Minnesota State Legislature, we have Representative Kurt Zellers. And to my immediate right, from the Minnesota Department of Public Safety, we have Commissioner Mona Doman. And again, to my far left, we have from the Minnesota Police Association, Executive Director Dave Pisha. So welcome, thank you all for being here. We appreciate you uh, supporting the effort. Also like... I'd also like to uh, once again thank the uh, Minnesota EMS Honor Guard for their service. Appreciate that. And uh, thanks to the, our, uh, our folks at Northwest Cable TV for allowing other people to see what we're doing here tonight. And lastly, uh, thank you very much to the fine folks here and the staff at Earl Brown Center for all their hard work and uh, serving us so well. I'd like to uh, welcome to the stage Mr. Michael Parrish. Mike is my boss. He's the Vice President of Primary Care and Enterprise Services, and he'll have a few remarks for you. Michael. Thanks, Pat. I'm going to keep this real short so we can get to the program. Good evening, and on behalf of North Memorial Healthcare, I'd like to welcome you all to the 
30th Annual Public Safety Service Awards. Uh, as Pat said, I'm Mike Parrish. I've been with North Memorial for a long time. And uh, this is always one of my favorite events. I've been involved with this event for greater than 20 years. And I'm always amazed at the courage and the compassion that is displayed by our recipients every year. It truly is remarkable. This year is no exception. All of these folks are, as I like to say, regular Joes who happen to find themselves in highly irregular situations. I'm sure you'll enjoy both the dinner, as I'm sure you did, as well as the presentations tonight. And again, thanks for coming, and I hope uh, in, uh, that you all have a safe trip home, and again, enjoy the evening. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. A little history here on the uh, Public Safety Awards. In 1984, North Memorial Medical Center hosted the first annual Public Safety Service Awards program to honor those individuals who had distinguished themselves through acts of dedication or heroism and who might otherwise go unnoticed. The event is sponsored by North Memorial Healthcare and is held on the second Thursday of November in, in the Twin Cities, usually here. Applications uh, nominating an individual or group of individuals are accepted throughout the state of Minnesota for the calendar year of October 1st through September 30th. Now, among those who have been honored in the past years, we have uh, police officers, sheriffs, FBI agents, firefighters, emergency medical services personnel, and civilians whose contributions and dedication to public safety really enrich the safety of, and quality in their communities. So I'd like to uh, introduce and, and uh, ask uh, the number of folks to uh, stand and be recognized here. I'd like to ask our members of our selection and event committee to stand. You know who you are. Thank you very much. Nancy Sunberg is our event coordinator, does a wonderful job pulling all of this together. Otherwise, this would not happen without Nancy's help. Nancy, where are you? There she is. There are three uh, categories of recognition. We have the Award of Valor, we have an Award for Honor, and lastly, we have an Award of Merit. And if you look over to my right on the stage here, you'll see a number of banners. The blue banner is uh, for law enforcement. The red stands for the fire service. The green represents EMS, and the white represents the civilian sector. And to date, we have honored 667 people. Tonight, we have two for valor, 10 for honor, 19 for merit. And of those, 11 come from law enforcement, six come from the fire service, four from EMS, and we have 10 civilian being represented here. So our speaker tonight is Don Goodmanson. And Don is a former Detroit police officer and homicide detective. During that time, homicide detectives in Detroit investigated over 600 murders in a, per year. He investigated homicides in Illinois and was a member of the Cook County Organized Crime Homicide Task Force, which investigated mafia assassinations. He was uh, elected to sheriff of his home county, Fillmore County. He was the appointed police chief in the city of Lakeville, Minnesota. He was elected sheriff of Dakota County in 1994, and he was reelected for three more terms. Now, following this distinguished career, and career, Don has served as an interim sheriff in Steele County and an interim police chief for the city of Faribault. And Don likes to point out that uh, all of this just proves he can't hold a job. Don is a graduate of Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. He's uh, also attended the Police Academy in Detroit, the Illinois Bureau of Investigation Academy, and the Law Enforcement Executive Development Seminar at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. Don has given speeches across the country to the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, Federal Office of Inspector General, and police chiefs and sheriff's associations. He also speaks for universities and colleges cities and county governments and for private businesses. Please welcome Don to the stage. Good 
know, I was uh, giving a speech not too long ago at the Kaler Hotel down in Rochester, and it was a fancy place there. And uh, so they had prime rib, baked potato, wonderful meal like we had tonight. And I was up front up here, and the waiter came by, had a little white shirt, a little black bow tie, had a little towel over his arm. He put down one pat of butter, you know, for my baked potato. I said, uh, could I have a second pat, please? He said, no, one pat per person. I said, well, perhaps you don't know who I am. He said, no, I don't. Who are you? I said, well, I'm the keynote speaker at this banquet. He said, I'm a former Detroit police officer and homicide detective investigating mafia and murders in Chicago, former sheriff of Fillmore County, former ch police chief in Lakeville, former sheriff of Dakota County, the interim sheriff in Steele County, interim police chief in Fairville. He said, oh, he said, perhaps you don't know who I am. I said, no, I don't. Who are you? He said, I'm the guy that's in charge of the butter. <laughs> so... I like to tell this story about uh, my wife, Mary. Her name is spelled like Christmas. And uh, we, after I got elected sheriff in Dakota County in 1984, we're taking a drive. And we're driving and talking and talking and driving. Pretty soon we're in southwest Minnesota. And I said, we're running out of gas. She goes, why don't you? She said, your cell phone work? Flip it up. No service. She said, we're in trouble. Just like that, we come over a little crest of the hill. Not many hills out there now. And there was a gas station kind of hamburger joint. And so a tenant comes out. I say, hey, man, fill her up. And I'm going to go inside, pay the bill, and buy a pack of gum. And I see this guy and my wife, they're talking and laughing, laughing and talking. Pretty soon he's in the front seat of my Explorer. And I think it, it gets done, and he comes in. I say, how much? And I pay the bill, and kind of cold, and I fill the check at him. And we're driving away, and I say to Mary, uh, what's up with you in a gas station tonight? She said, you'll never believe it. She said, that guy and I went together all through high school. And she said, people thought we were such a thing we were going to get married one day. I said, well, it's a good thing you didn't marry him. You'd be flipping burgers and pumping gas today. She said, no, I wouldn't. He'd be the sheriff. <laughs> oh, ladies, you know how true that is. So uh, the... The guy uh, who's in charge of HR in Dakota County said to me, Sheriff, you know, you can't be running across the county, across the state, and now you're running across the country telling these ethnic jokes. You're going to get us into trouble. It's a large county. We're kind of politically correct. I said, well, 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 well. I said, from now on, I'll only tell stories about the good Samaritans, right, the good Samaritans of the Bible. So did you hear about these two good Samaritans, Oli and Lena? So Lena got, now we're in Minnesota, I gotta do this here, you know. So Lena was, got picked up for shoplifting. And so she had to go in front of mean old Judge Svensson and she drags Oli along and sits him in the front row and Judge Svensson calls her up and he said, yeah, Lena, you're charged with shoplifting. She said, yeah. He said, how'd you plead? Guilty. He said, okay, for sentencing, what did you take? She said, I took a can of peaches. He said, really? How many peaches are in that can? She said, seven. He said, all right, seven peaches. That'll be seven days in jail. And Oli raised his hand. He said, Oli, did you want to say something? He said, yeah, she took a can of peas, too. <laughs> so, hey, you got to have a story when you get home tonight. You know, I, one of my, uh, we're just out of the World Series baseball games, and one of my favorite sayings is Casey Stengel, who said, Getting good players is easy. Getting them to play together, now that's the hard part. And of course, he was the manager of the Yankees in the 50s and the 60s. And getting good players is easy. Getting them to play together, that's the hard part. You know, and I travel across the country speaking to state, local, state, and federal officers, and I am pleased to say, and I've worked in several other states, that the players here are good players here played it well together. Much better, by the way, than they do in most other states. And tonight you're going to see the ability of these professionals to play together. I was reading a newspaper article this morning online, and the author, Jonah Goldberg, said something. I copied it down, and he said this. He was giving a definition of hubris. And he said, hubris is a sinful pride or arrogance that causes someone to believe 
He has a God-like immunity from the rules of life. All you have to do is pick up tomorrow's paper to read about hubris. You read about hubris with politicians, business leaders, even the church, and occasionally even public safety professionals. But what you'll see tonight from the award winners is the furthest thing from hubris. You're going to see humility and humbleness. The award winners are thrilled that all of you are here, especially family. But a part of them is embarrassed that you're making a fuss over. They respond to the awards and the appreciation with a simple, I was just doing my job. I was with a group of officers in Detroit, and we were in a, a major gunfight. And um, one of the, my partners uh, was honored by the Detroit Police Department and given the award for bravery, the highest award that the Detroit Police Department gives. Years later, I was at his home, and I was having dinner with his wife and his two sons. And I said to the boys, I said, boys, these are teenage sons now. I said to them, boys, you know your father got the highest award for bravery from the Detroit Police Department. And they, you know, again, teenage boys now, they didn't appreciate their father too much to start with. They looked at me and then they looked at him and he went like this. Don't even talk about it. They had never heard about the incident. They had never heard about the medal. And it's the same way here. The awards and medals will be put away for you young people, they will be found by your grandchildren years and years from now digging through your stuff. That is the absolute truth. It's not that they're not appreciated. It's not that they're not honored. They're just doing their job. You know, in the ancient script it says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. And you'll see that verse come alive. I was taught in essence in Detroit, turn toward the danger. Turn toward the danger. You're safest if you turn toward the danger. Rob, did you look at what happened at the Boston Marathon? What did you see? Everyone's running away. What did you see the cops doing? What did you see the EMS people doing? What did you see the fire people doing? They're running toward the danger. And you see the same thing at 9-11. They ran toward the danger and gave their life up for their friends. And before this night is over, for two hours or so, someone, some officer, some EMS provider, some sheriff's deputy, some fire officer, some state conservation officer will turn toward the danger in these next two hours, and through the night, and through the year. You know, the one thing that public safety professionals are never discouraged about is snafus. Things go wrong. We like it when things go wrong. I hate to tell you that. We're excited when things go wrong. Why? Because we're there to straighten it out. In 1895, there were two cars in the entire state of Ohio, and they ran into each other. <laughs> now, the commissioner of public safety is here. She would ask this question. Were they state trooper cars? They had to be state troopers' cars. Not really. The sheriff or the police chief could ask the same question. I read this this morning. It said, the odds of a peanut butter sandwich falling face first onto the carpet is, di direct is directly proportional to the cost of the carpet. <laughs> and of course that's true. Now, I was it been in Kentucky four times recently to give speeches. And I had to have a story about Daniel Boone. And Daniel Boone would never admit to being lost. Ladies, does that remind you of anybody? Daniel Boone had never admit to being lost. He said he was occasionally bewildered, but never lost. And that is what we are as law enforcement and public safety professionals. We're occasionally bewildered by all of this. 
but we're not lost. The Times of London in my last little story in 1910 asked the question, what's wrong with the world today? And people responded back by letter. No one sent an email, no one sent a text, and no one Twittered. By the way, there are more texts sent and received every day than the population of the world. More than seven billion. And that's just from your teenager's bedroom. <laughs> right? I told my daughter once when she got in the car, doo -doo 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 -doo. I said to her, my grandchildren have thumbs the size of hammer handles. <laughs> but see, no one sent in a text, but they sent in the letter. And the letter said, what's wrong with the world today? Too much trouble with drinking, too much trouble with gambling, too much trouble with the breakup of the family, too much drugs. Wow, 103 years later, pretty much the same thing. And one guy writes in, and he writes in with a two-word letter. And even though they kept the form open week after week, asking, hey, how come you don't send us something in about what's wrong with the world today? To the question, what's wrong with the world today, the response was, I am. Sincerely, G.K. Chesterton, London, the great novelist and writer. I am. What you're going to see tonight, on the other hand, is not what's wrong with the world today. You're going to see what's right with the world today. God bless. God bless America. Our first award tonight um, actually is an award per se. It's a scholarship presentation. And I'd like to call on Ray McCoy, the director of West Hennepin Public Safety, who's also on our selection committee, uh, to come up and uh, give this uh, scholarship. And as well, I'd like to ask Greg Hoppenrath to uh, come to the stage as well. Thank you. It is with great honor and it was very humbling when I was asked to uh, reflect on a history of the Doug Hoppenrath Public uh, Safety Achievement Award. For many in this room, you did not have the distinct pleasure of knowing Doug Hoppenrath. I'll try to briefly explain the significance that Doug Hoppenrath had in law enforcement, fire service, EMS, and the citizens of our communities. Doug had the most infectious smile, bubbling personality, and overflowed with customer service to those around him. <clears throat> Doug was always willing to share his expertise for a better patient care, promotion of interagency cooperation. He clearly understood the first responder role in providing first aid than the first few minutes of an illness or a tragedy. As Doug was a paramedic at North, he was a firefighter with the Brooklyn Park Fire Department. He served with Hannibal County Sheriff's Emergency Squad. He understood each of those roles of EMS, fire, and law enforcement. In 1984, Doug created the North Memorial Public Safety Award Program. Doug did not only notice there was a real void within police, fire, EMS, but recognition of the heroic action that these people took to assist another person. Doug also seen that the civilians that are not paid to put their lives into danger would intentionally put themselves in harm's way to assist oftentimes a stranger. In 1984, this started out in the lower level of North Memorial Hospital. It soon outgrew the hospital setting and has honored hundreds of people in the past 29 years. Then we received the, devast the devastating news of Doug's illness and he put up a great fight, but the illness finally took his life at age 52 in 1998. In Doug's honor, the Doug Hoppenrath Public Safety Achievement Award was created to honor those whose life was dedicated to public safety and best exemplified the true spirit of public service that Doug lived every day. A while ago, I mentioned to my daughter, Stephanie, that I was gonna be giving this introduction tonight. She then went on to recount all the memories she had as a child, attending the state fire chief conferences in which Doug was the face of North Memorial. She even recounted some of the items that he gave her. It was then that I realized 
that not only was Doug just successful in what he did, but what he did was significant. You may ask, what is significance? Webster defines it as the quality of having notable work or influence. I propose to you that describes Doug Hoppenrath's life. In 2013, in an effort to further honor the significance that Doug Hoppenrath had, to honor his dedication to law enforcement, to honor his dedication to the fire service, to honor his dedication to EMS, and yes, honor his dedication to the citizens in our communities. The Doug Hoppenrath Public Safety Achievement Award was changed to the Doug Hoppenrath Scholarship Endowment Fund. This scholarship fund is designed to assist children of police, fire, and EMS parents. One of the requirements are that the child is pursuing a career in police, fire, or EMS, and in the spirit of Doug's significance, needs to be involved in extracurricular activities, community, or volunteer activities. On stage with us tonight is Greg Hoppenrath, Doug's brother, who helped present the scholarships to two very outstanding recipients to receive the first scholarships from the Doug Hoppenrath Scholarship Endowment Fund. As I have challenged myself, I'd like to challenge each of our award recipients, to each one that is present tonight, no matter what your position on the organizational chart is, go beyond the job description, reach out, give that extra service, give that encouraging word, and listening ear, a helping hand, that, my friends, is creating significance, a Doug Hoppenrath type of significance. I'd like to invite to the stage Landis Doulis. Landy is currently enrolled at Minnesota State University, Mankato, majoring in law enforcement with a minor in psychology. She is in her third year and will be able to graduate with her four-year Bachelor of Science degree in the fall of 2014. She plans to take the Minnesota Post Test to become a licensed police officer at the end of 2014. Landy is following the footsteps of her father and grandfather, who are also in law enforcement. She states, Ideally, I'd love to serve my country in the federal government system. Congratulations, Landy. Our second uh, scholarship recipient tonight is Jacob Novanti. Jacob is currently pursuing his paramedic certificate at Inver Hills Community College. He's already earned his associate in arts degree in general education from Anoka Ramsey Community College and is working towards his bachelor degree in business through Metro State University. His goal is to work for a program called Young Life, a Christian organization that mentors kids to help develop their goals and faith. He would also like to work in a rural hospital or an ambulance service. He states, it is my greatest desire to give back to the community as much as I possibly can. Congratulations, Jacob. <laughs> Just one last note that I'd like to leave with you. There is envelopes and cards on the, each of the tables. If you'd like to be part of the ongoing uh, scholarship fund for Doug Hoppenrath, please just take the card and fill that out and uh, be, uh, get into the right hands. So thank you for your contributions and thank you for being here this evening. We'll begin our awards presentation now. And, uh, Commissioner Goldman, if you would go to the stage along with Dave. The first award tonight is in the law enforcement category, and it's the award of valor, the highest award that we have. With the family of Thomas Decker and representative of the Cold Spring Police Department, please step forward.
On the evening of November 29, 2012, Cold Spring Police Officer Thomas Decker responded to a welfare check of a man who lived above a local bar. Upon arrival, Officer Decker approached the building down a dark alley where he was fatally wounded. For Officer Decker's dedication to duty, we honor him, his memory, and the ultimate sacrifice that he made. Let's go out to you. The uh, next word is also in the category of law enforcement. It is also for Valor, for K-9 Cody. Could Cody's handler, Officer David Longbean, and a representative of the St. Paul Police Department step forward? On the afternoon of February 12, 2013, St. Paul Police K-9 Cody, along with his partner, Officer David Longveen, entered a home to serve a warrant. They found the man in the basement, armed with a knife. Cody approached him, and the suspect stabbed him multiple times. Officers recognized the threat to themselves and fatally shot the suspect. Cody died from his wounds en route to the veterinary hospital. For K-9 Cody's dedication to duty, we honor him and the sacrifice he made. Also in the law enforcement category, an award for honor, Christopher Piero, would you please step forward? On the morning of April 11, 2013, Anoka County Sheriff's Deputy Christopher Piero responded to a vehicle accident at Crosstown Boulevard and Bunker Lake Road in Andover. When Piero arrived at the scene, the vehicle was in a pond and sinking. The driver was in the water struggling to stay afloat. Piero shed some of the equipment and clothing before entering the water to retrieve the young man. By the time he reached the man, he was submerged and all Piero could see was his hand. He grabbed hold of him, getting him above the water, and pulled him back to shore. The young man was taken to the hospital where he did recover. For his actions, we present Deputy Piero, Piero with the Award of Honor. Okay, Mona, you may step down if you'd like, and Pam, we need you to join Dave. Uh, this award is for Merit and Honor in Law Enforcement and EMS combined. G. David Brook, Anthony Petrie, Jamie Scherf, and Jeff Basinger, would you please step forward? On April 6, 2012, Beltrami County Sheriff's Deputies G. David Brook, Anthony Petrie, Jamie Scherf, and Sanford Bagley Ambulance First Responder Jeff Basinger responded to Clearwater Lake where three brothers were floating in the water after their sailboat they were on upended. Upon arrival, the deputies were unable to, to locate any type of boat as it was early in the season and no one had their boats ready to go yet. They broke into a shed near the lake and borrowed a boat and paddles. And while deputies rowed towards the boys, Bassinger jumped into the water and retrieved one of them. The two other boys were pulled into the boat and taken to shore. Unfortunately, two of the three brothers did not survive. For their actions, we present them with these awards. of 
Merritt in law enforcement and EMS again. Uh, Mike Hagen, Scott Grice, Thomas Meyer, Brett Grunmeyer, Jeff Ilstrup, and Mary Jarvis. Please step forward. On the morning of May 30th, 2013, Minnesota State Patrol Trooper Mike Hagen, along with Pine County Sheriff's Deputy Scott Grice, Sergeant Thomas Meyer, DNR Conservation Officer Brett Grunmeyer, Essentia Health Sandstone Paramedic Jeff Ilstrup, and EMT Mary Jarvis responded to a farm near Hinkley. A young man was working in the bottom of a 10 foot tall gravity box and had gotten his leg caught in the auger and was near, which was nearly amputated. Hagen, Grunmeyer, Ilstrup, and Jarvis climbed in the bin and down to the victim. As the medical personnel tried to stabilize the man, it was decided that they needed to lift him out quickly due to his deteriorating condition. Grice and Meyer joined the crew to help lift. They all had to stand on an elevator, elevated support bar, use one, one arm to hold on and another to help the victim. Because of the steep sides of the bin, the man's size, and his blood loss, which also made the side of the bin slippery, they could only lift him out part way. As they held the man suspended, Ilstrup and Jarvis added a second tourniquet lifting him onto the grate inside the bin, and then they were able to move him to a front end loader, and then from an area where they could, could be airlifted to the hospital. For their actions, we present them with the Award of Merit. This award is an award of honor, and it's in the, in the EMS category. Would Eric Therner please come forward? On June 30th, 2013, Eric Therner, North Memorial Air Carrion, was riding his bicycle to start his shift at Amplatz Emergency Department in Minneapolis. He noticed a North Memorial ambulance parked in the middle of the street with its lights on and back door open. He stopped and looked into the ambulance to see two paramedics in an altercation with a patient. The man had them by the hair and was kicking and biting them. Eric jumped in and freed them from, from his uh, grip. The patient then grabbed one of the medics by the throat and started to choke her. Eric was able again to free her. Uh, he helped get the patient in four point restraints and they waited for the police to arrive for further assistance. For his action, we. We present Eric Therner with the Award of Honor. <laughs> Mr. Dunn. This is an award of merit in the fire category. Greg Bomstead, you please come forward. On May 5th, 2013, Sauk Rapids firefighter Greg Bomstead was enjoying some time with his children at a water park in Baxter. Another person pointed out a young boy's lifeless body in the pool. The boy was pulled out of the pool and Greg along with another person were able to administer CPR. After approximately 10 minutes, the boy suddenly gasped and spit up water. He was then taken to the hospital where he did recover. For his actions, we present Greg Bomstead with this award of merit. an award of merit in the fire category. Mr. Jerry Rosendahl, will you come forward? Jerry Rosendahl has over 40 years of dedication to the Minnesota Fire Service. He has served the cities of Woodbury, Hastings, Owatonna, in all positions from firefighter to fire chief. He has been a member of the Minnesota State Fire Chiefs Association for 35 years. He has served on multiple committees. In 2003,
1983, Jerry was named Minnesota State Fire Marshal, and he has made countless changes to improve the lives of the citizens of Minnesota. For his dedication to fire safety, we present Jerry Rosendahl with this award of merit. This is an award of merit in the uh, fire and civilian category. Would Dennis Wolfty, Chris Pounder, Paul Jolliker, Jeff Price, Brett Nykam, and Jay Sewell join us on stage. On January 18th, 2013, Mound Fire and Rescue, which included Captain Dennis Wolke, firefighters Chris Pounder, Paul Jolliker, and Jeff Bryce, responded to a call of a vehicle through the ice near Halstead Bay Bridge on Lake Minnetonka. Prior to their arrival, civilians Brett Neekam and Jay Sewell heard cries coming from the water. They were able to help out of the icy water a mother and a daughter, while the father was still in the water trying to get the infant out of her car seat. Neekam finally convinced the father to get out as fire rescue arrived. The four firefighters put on Mustang suits and entered the water. But the suits were too buoyant, and they had to let cold water into them so they could submerge themselves and rescue the infant. For their actions in this life-saving effort, we present them with the Award of Merit. Next award is for merit and honor in law enforcement in the civilian sector. For Nicole Carl, Joel Hoppy and uh, Joel Hoppy Jr. Uh, Joel Hoppy and Joel Hoppy Jr. were, I guess, unable to attend. But if Nicole would come forward, we appreciate it. On the evening of July 9th, 2013, on Highway 36 in North St. Paul, Minnesota State Patrol made a traffic stop. After handcuffing and placing the driver in a squad car, the passenger was being searched for any weapons. He struggled with the trooper and fled on foot. The trooper chased him several yards but returned to his squad car as he was unable to leave the other suspect unattended. At the same time, off-duty St. Paul police officer Nicole Carl witnessed this altercation stop, identified herself, and gave chase to the man. With the suspect on the run, the two civilians and Nicole stopped uh, the vehicle and took down the fleeing suspect and held him down until the trooper arrived and took him into full custody. For their actions, we present them with these awards. <laughs> Next in the honor category and the civilian category, Jeffrey Reset. Would you please step forward? On January 12, 2013, in Plymouth, Minnesota, Jeffrey Reset was riding his bicycle home from work. He noticed in a nearby frozen pond a vehicle on its side. He stopped and stepped out on the fragile ice, attempting to make contact with anyone in the vehicle. He heard a female voice coming from the car. He then called 911 for help. The woman had been trapped in her car for 18 hours in the frigid temperatures until Reset made contact and got help. For his actions, we present Jeffrey Reset with this award of honor. And we also have the woman that uh, he saved here tonight. And Nancy Breberg, would you please stand? <laughs> An award of merit in the civilian category, Angela Westbrook.
on August 17th, 2013, on Highway 70 in Pine County, Angela Westberg, along with her husband, were the first citizens to come across a fatal car accident. While her husband, Brett, an off-duty state patrol trooper, aided the driver who later died from his injuries, Angela took custody of the extremely distraught nine-year-old daughter. She remained with the girl, riding in the ambulance to the hospital, and waited for uh, her mother to arrive. For unselfless, compassionate actions, we present Angela Westbrook with this award of merit. <laughs> An award of honor in the civilian category, Travis Jerk, Ward Williams, and John Heidenreich. On October 23, 2012, on the ramp to Highway 77, from I-94, the car of an elderly couple started on fire. The driver pulled over and was able to exit the vehicle, but the passenger, his wife, was not able to get out. The vehicle was filling with smoke and the engine became fully engulfed. Travis Jurek, Ward Williams, and John Heidenreich observed the fire and stopped to help. After trying to open the driver's door and finding it too hot, they ran to the passenger side door and successfully removed the woman. Together, they carried her away from the burning vehicle. For their actions, we present them with this award of honor. Our last award is an award of honor in the civilian category, Mr. James Buck. On September 25th, 2013, James Buck was traveling down County Road 11 in Independence when he spotted a vehicle brake lights down in the ditch. He pulled his vehicle to the side of the road and went to investigate. As he approached the vehicle, he observed smoke coming from the engine. He opened the door and pulled the driver out fearing the vehicle was going to start fire. Seconds after pulling her out and moving her to safety, the vehicle was engulfed fully in flames. For his actions, we present James Buck with the award of honor. Well, that concludes our awards presentation. I would like to thank you all very much for coming. It's been an honor to be in your presence this evening. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And we want to thank uh, and congratulate all the award recipients. Uh, I want to thank the committee members for all of your hard work, Nancy, for all your hard work, and everybody for coming. It's been a great evening, and we hope you have a very safe ride home. Thank you.